Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Bob, Sein, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kof, Chof, Lamed, Mel, Yon, Samech, Ein, Pei, Fet, Sadi, Kuf, Reish, Shun, Sin, Tov, Now I think I've said enough. Welcome to another in our series, From the Aleph Bet, a series for anyone of any age who wishes to know how to read and pronounce Hebrew and really understand it as a language. I'm Mark Golub. Again, thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to be with you. My entire staff so enjoys having you with us and appreciates all the emails and comments you make and questions you give us, so please keep writing and I can't tell you what your encouragement means to all of us. Well, we've taken a lot of lessons to learn all the Hebrew letters, all the Hebrew vowels. Last time we played around with the silent and the pronounced shva. And all of this will, con will continue to remind you as we go along. But the most important thing to remember is Hebrew is a language. It's a way of communicating. It is the sound, the music of the Jewish people. And therefore, even when one doesn't understand what a Hebrew word means or what a prayer means word for word, actually saying the Hebrew, having it roll around on one's tongue, in one's mouth, hearing it in one's ear, has tremendous value. It's important to teach young people how to pronounce Hebrew, how to read from the prayer book, from the Siddur, even if they don't understand everything they're saying, because it is our music, our people's music. That's what the Hebrew language is. But Hebrew is a language. And if you want to learn how to converse, if you want conversational Hebrew, this isn't the series for you. Really, to learn how to converse in Hebrew, how to speak Hebrew, one has to take an ulpan, an intensive Hebrew study program, or the best way, of course, is to be immersed in the culture that speaks Hebrew, and that is basically live for a while in the state of Israel. And many people who really either want to learn Hebrew or do learn Hebrew, learn it because they've spent time in Israel. But I'm not interested in conversational Hebrew. I'm interested in your becoming comfortable with and familiar with the Hebrew that's used in the experience of being Jewish here in America. And so what we're going to do is begin with a vocabulary list of words basically we've, we've shown you as we've been teaching you Hebrew letters, but here are many Hebrew words that it would be wonderful if you could read, but not only pronounce, read and understand. And we'll use this as our jumping off point and we'll continue to add more and more Hebrew vocabulary for you now that you can read virtually any Hebrew word you see. So let's begin with the vocabulary that you studied as you learned your Hebrew alphabet with us and we begin with the most important Hebrew word in the Jewish tradition. This is the word Shabbat, Mitsuyan. I'll remind you it has two vowels, therefore it has two syllables. Every Hebrew letter either has a vowel or a shva. A shva is never counted as a vowel. And under the tuf is in fact a silent shva. Mitsuyan, Alex, thank you very much. And the silent shva is under any last letter of a word if that word does not have a vowel of its own but it's understood at the end of a word, so it's normally not written. And therefore, we write this word Shabbat with simply a patach and a kamat. And I've also reminded you that all Hebrew words are based on three-letter Hebrew roots. And the Hebrew root of the word Shabbat is Shin Bet Taf, which always has something to do with resting, mitsuyan, and therefore Shabbat is simply a day of rest. And if you want to know what Shabbat really means in Hebrew, it means this extraordinary, universal day of rest, Shabbat. And again, this is the most important Hebrew word. Why do I say that? Because in the Jewish tradition, nothing is more important than the family celebrating the Shabbat. And there's a saying in the Jewish tradition that anyone who observes, who 
keeps the Shabbat is given credit for having observed all 613 commandments. If one has Shabbat in one's home, even if one simply celebrates on Friday night around a table, two candles, a kiddush, a challah, parents and children, sometimes with grandparents or extended family, as long as there's Shabbat in the home, one is giving credit for having observed all the 613 commandments. That's how important the Shabbat is. So Shabbat is the first word I taught you, Shin Bet Tuf, and it's the most important word you can know and read and understand in terms of the Jewish tradition. Now here's another word, a beautiful Hebrew word. Two vowels, two syllables, the word is read, Shalom, Shalom. And Shalom means peace, Mitsuyan. Shalom is used in conversational Hebrew to mean hello or goodbye, which means really when you greet someone, when you first come upon them, you say to them, peace, Shalom. In English we say hello. It isn't really hello. Shalom never means hello. It always means peace. But for the Jew, to greet someone, the greeting is shalom, peace. And when one leaves another person, the blessing, the, the way in which one says goodbye in Hebrew is again shalom. So some conversational Hebrew books will sometimes say shalom means hello and goodbye. It doesn't mean hello. It doesn't mean goodbye. It always means peace. And it comes from the Hebrew root Shin Lamed Mem and Shin Lamed Mem means to be whole or complete. What a lovely idea. To be whole, to be in harmony with oneself is to have Shalom, peace. And if you put these two words together, you get a beautiful Hebrew phrase, Shabbat Shalom, Sabbath peace which is the greeting one Jew extends to another when one meets on Shabbat. One says to another Jew, Shabbat Shalom. May you have a wonderful, peaceful Sabbath, day of rest. Shabbat Shalom. The third Hebrew word I taught you, two vowels, two syllables. Abba is correct. And Abba means daddy or father in Hebrew. Although I didn't teach it to you, I can now show you the word for mother in Hebrew. Ima Mitsuyan. Here's a phrase, Shabbat Shalom Abba. And that's what one would say to one's Abba, one's father on the Shabbat. Peaceful Sabbath, daddy or father, Mitsuyan. The next word. This is the second most important Hebrew word in the Jewish tradition. By the way, is there a most important Hebrew word? Is there a second most important Hebrew word? Not really. They're all important. And for some people, this word is the most important Hebrew word. Yet, in terms of the way we understand Judaism, it's the second most important word. And this word is Torah. Torah is correct. Torah or Torah. And Torah is the five books of Moses. It literally means law or teaching. And it comes from the Hebrew root to teach. But Torah is the teaching. It's the law. It's the five books of Moses. It's the basis of Jewish life. It is the equivalent of the constitution of the Jewish people. Everything is built upon the Torah, the five books of Moses. And now you can read this Hebrew word, Torah, or Torah, the five books of Moses, Mitsuyan. We're going to show you two words that are sort of related. Here's the first one with the segol under both letters, the lamed and the chet, another two vowel and therefore two syllable word. And anytime you see a word with two segols, the accent is always on the first segol. Normally, Hebrew words are accented at the end of a word, but not in a word with two segols. And therefore, this word would be pronounced lechem, mitsuyan, lechem. 
The chet is the second letter, the slight clearing of the throat, lechem. And lechem means bread, mitsuyan. Any kind of bread is lechem. In fact, the Hebrew tradition uses the word lechem in a bigger sense. Any source of sustenance, food, is lechem in the Jewish tradition. But literally it means bread, mitsuyan. And now this word is a special kind of bread. The word is chala, mitsuyan, chala. In Sephardic Hebrew, the accent would be on the second syllable, chala. Many people say chala. But wait, is chala wrong? No. But if you want to pronounce it in Israeli Sephardic Hebrew, it would be chala. And chala, of course, is the gorgeous, delicious, twisted bread, braided bread, that is used on Shabbat. And chala refers to bread that's used on Jewish holidays. On Rosh Hashanah, the high holidays, Yom Kippur, to break the fast, on Sukkot, the challah tends to be round. So you have the round challah and the braided challah. And challah is a type of lechem, mitsuyan. So you know the word lechem and challah, mitsuyan. Let's stay with the letter chet and put a chataf patach under it. This looks like it's a patach with a silent shva next to it. Actually, it's a pronounced shva with a patach next to it to give it some more body. And we never count a shva as a vowel. And therefore, how many vowels in this word? Two is correct. The shruk after the nun, the kamatz under the kaf. And the first syllable would be chanu, mitsuyan, not cha. There'd be no vowel in that syllable. And every Hebrew syllable must have one vowel, can only have one vowel, never more, never fewer. And therefore, the first syllable must have a vowel. The vowel is the shuruk u. The first syllable would be chanu, mitsuyan. The second syllable, ka, put the word together and you get the holiday, chanukah, mitsuyan, chanukah, two syllables. And Chanukah is the festival of lights, where we light the Chanukiah or the menorah, eight consecutive nights of Chanukah. But the word Chanukah actually means dedication, since it was the holiday on which the temple was again dedicated or rededicated by the Maccabees in the second century BCE after they defeated the Syrians to regain the Temple Mount. The word is Hanukkah, Mitsuyan. Here's another Jewish holiday. Simple word, two vowels. Suka, Mitsuyan. That's the kubutz under the Samech. And don't mistake the Samech for a final mem. First of all, the final mem only comes at the end of a word, never at the beginning or middle, so it can't be a final mem. And remember, the Samech has the slice in the bottom right-hand corner. The word is sukkah. And sukkah is a booth. And if you take the plural of the word sukkah, you get the Jewish holiday of sukkot, mitsuyan. The ot ending is plural in Hebrew. Sukkot means booths and refers to the feast of booths or the festival of booths where we build a little hut to remind us of the temporary homes, the tents, the Israelites had to live in when they wandered in the wilderness for 37, 40 years, a generation on their way from Egypt to the promised land, the land of Canaan and Eretz Yisrael, the holiday of Sukkot, Mitsuyan. Here's another Jewish holiday. Two vowels, two syllables. The segel under the first letter means we accent the first syllable. Pesach, Mitsuyan, Pesach. And Pesach is the holiday of Passover, Mitsuyan. And here's another Jewish holiday, beginning with the letter Pe, two vowels, the Shuruk and the Hirik, therefore two syllables. The first syllable would be Pu, Mitsuyan, the second syllable, Rim, 
put the word together, you get Purim. In English, we call it Purim. And Purim is the word for lots, as in the lottery that Haman used to select the date upon which he was going to kill all the Jews in the Purim story. Another word, this time with the fe, and remember a pe and a fe are really the same letter. It only matters where the letter appears in a word to determine whether it does or does not have a dagesh. And in this word, the pe does not have a dagesh and it's pronounced as the English letter F. And the word is yafe, mitsuyan. It means beautiful. Mitsuyan, yafe, beautiful. How about this Hebrew word? One vowel, one syllable, a word you've heard often. Yom is correct, and yom means day, mitsuyan. The opposite of yom is this word, laila, mitsuyan. And notice the patach followed by the yud is the English vowel i, as in the word hi. So the word is laila. Laila is night, yom is day. How about this Hebrew word? Tov. Tov is correct. Tov means good, the adjective good, mitsuyan. And if you take the adjective tov and add it to the noun yom, you get the phrase yom tov. Literally, it means a Good day, actually it means a day good. In Hebrew, the adjective follows the noun. In English, it precedes the noun. Therefore, when we translate this phrase, Yom Tov, we would flip it to say, good day. But a Yom Tov also is the Hebrew way of saying holiday. A holiday in Hebrew is called a Yom Tov, Mitsuyan. In Yiddish, by the way, Yom Tov became what, Alex? Yontif. Yontif is correct. Yontif is simply the Yiddishization of the Hebrew phrase Yom Tov. And you'll hear people say, good Yontif, which is really good, good day or good holiday. Since Yontif and Yom Tov is an idiom that means holiday. Yom Tov. How about this word? Mazal is correct. Mazal. And Mazal literally means constellation, stars. It came to mean luck, as if one was born under lucky stars. And if you add it to the word tov, you get mazal tov, which literally means good luck, but is used idiomatically in Hebrew as congratulations. You want to say congratulations to someone on a happy occasion? One says in Hebrew, mazal tov. In Yiddish, Alex? Mazel tov. tov. exactly right. And whether you say Mazel Tov, which is the Yiddishization again of the Hebrew Mazal Tov, or you say it in the Hebrew Sephardic pronunciation of Mazal Tov, in either case, you're expressing to someone, we're so proud of you. Congratulations. I hope you have a long and healthy life. Mazal Tov or Mazel Tov, either one. Mazal Tov. Here's another Hebrew word. It's pronounced one of two ways, either shame, that's a tseire, the A sound, or sometimes the tseire is pronounced very much like a segol, eh, and some people would say shem. Either way is correct. Shame or shem means name. The English rhymes with the Hebrew, shame and name. And what is a shame tov or a shem tov? A good name, Mitsuyan, and a Shem Tov or a Shem Tov becomes idiomatically a reputation. And therefore, there is the famous Hasidic master, the individual who created Hasidism, is known as the Baal Shem Tov. Baal means master, the master of the good name, meaning that he was the master in terms of having a wonderful reputation. The Baal Shem Tov, Mitsuyan. Okay, how about this Hebrew word? Two vowels, two syllables. It is the Hebrew word gadol. Ga is the first syllable, dol is the second. Gadol means 
big or large or great. And whatever makes the best English translation is the word we use to translate gadol. And how about this Hebrew word? One of my favorites. A word you know so well because you hear it in almost every Jewish blessing. Again, it has a segel under the first letter. The accent is on the first syllable. Melech is correct. And what I'm hoping is that whenever you see this word melech, this image will come to mind. And it'll be the same image that you have when you hear or see the English word king. And I've explained to you before, that's the way language becomes yours, especially with nouns. When you begin to see in your mind an image, the same image for the Hebrew word that you have for the English word, you know that Hebrew becomes your language. And therefore, if you see this image when you see the English word king, and you see the same image in your mind when you see the Hebrew word melech, then Hebrew is a real language for you. Melech is not K-I-N-G. Melech is this image. And wherever possible, we give you images, especially with Hebrew nouns, because we don't want you to see English letters that translate Hebrew words whenever we give you a Hebrew word. We want you to see an image, a picture, that becomes associated in your mind with the Hebrew letters. So when you see these Hebrew letters and this Hebrew word, melech, we hope you see in your mind the same image that you see when you see the word in English, king. Again, I don't want you to see the word K-I-N-G when the word Melech comes up. Rather, I want you to see this image in your mind. This is the Hebrew word Melech. And Melech Gadol is this. Mitsuyan, Alex. This is Melech Gadol. This is Melech. This is Melech Gadol. Mitsuyan. By the way, this is Lechem. This is Lechem Gadol. And when you begin to see Hebrew in imagery, then it's a real language for you. And again, that's what we hope we'll help you do as we study Hebrew together here on From the Aleph Bet. Another Hebrew word. This word is Ne'er, or again, it could be Ne'er, and it means... Candle, Mitsuyan, candle. Here's the word we showed you last week. I hope you can now read the word Yisrael. And it means simply Israel, Mitsuyan. And Yisrael means either the people of Israel, the Jewish people, or the state of Israel, the Midinat Yisrael. And we showed you this word also, Shema Mitsuyan, and Shema means hear or listen, and Shema Yisrael means listen Israel or hear O Israel, which are the first two words of the most important line in the Jewish tradition. Hear O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Mitsuyan. Here's the word Eretz. Mitsuyan. Eretz begins with a segol, and therefore the accent is on the first syllable, e. Eretz. Eretz means land or earth, Mitsuyan. And therefore, what would Eretz Yisrael be? Eretz Yisrael. The land of Israel, Mitsuyan. Medinat Yisrael means the state of Israel. Eretz Yisrael means the land of Israel. Mitsuyan. How about this word that begins with a silent letter, the silent ayin? Don't read it as a Y. It's a silent letter. Two vowels, two syllables. The word is olam. Mitsuyan. Olam. It's a word you hear almost in every prayer. Olam means the world or the universe. And it comes from the Hebrew root ayin. Lamed Mem, and the root, Ayin Lamed Mem, always has something to do with 
infinity, infinity. And therefore, as a noun, the word olam is the universe, the infinite universe. And that's why you see a picture of the galaxy here, to express the idea not of the world, but of the universe, the infinite universe. And that's what the word olam means. And when you hear the phrase talking about God as melech ha'olam, God is really the king of the infinite. We tend to translate it king of the world or king of the universe. But you understand the Hebrew is saying something more powerful. Melech comes from the word sovereign. And olam comes from the word infinite. And when the Jewish tradition tries to express the idea of God, it tries to say that God is somehow the power that infuses and that permeates and that makes possible the infinite in this entire existence of ours. Melech ha'olam, a gorgeous phrase. When one understands it hebraically, one understands that to say king of the world or king of the universe, it's empty. To say the sovereign, the, the power, the ultimate majesty of all that is, that's what the phrase melech ha'olam means. One has a different sense of what the blessing is trying to articulate and express. And it comes by understanding that ayin lamid mem is the Hebrew root for the infinite. And olam as a noun is translated as universe in the sense of it being the infinite. Another Hebrew word we showed you before, we also showed it to you last week, tzedakah mitsuyan, and tzedakah, which you'll hear often uh, pronounced as tzedakah. Tzedakah means charity, but in the sense of being a righteous, loving individual. Any act of kindness and righteousness is tzedakah in the Jewish tradition. Here's a word that comes from Passover using the tzari. Matzah, mitsuyan, unleavened bread, the flat bread eaten on Passover. You'll hear people call it matzah, but the Hebrew pronunciation in Sephardic is matzah, mitsuyan. And another word like it, mitzvah. You'll hear people say mitzvah. But the actual pronunciation in Sephardic Hebrew is mitzvah. And it means commandment. It has colloquially come to mean a good deed. Whenever one does a good deed, somebody says, oh, you did a mitzvah. But that's because in the Jewish tradition, a commandment is a good deed. The Hebrew word is mitzvah. It comes from the Hebrew root tzari, vav, hey, always having to do with commandment. And mitzvah is a commandment, mitzuyan. And here's a word, kadosh, you've seen before. It means holy and comes from the Hebrew root kuf, dalid, shin. And here's the word with the vowel cholam with a yud, goy. And goy is the word for nation. And the Jewish people are called a Goy Kadosh, a holy nation, Mitsuyan. Here, one of the most wonderful words in the Hebrew alphabet that's only two letters. Chai is correct. The Patach Yud is always pronounced I in Hebrew. Chai means life. And the Chet is the number eight. The Yud is the number 10. So Chai is numerically 18 which is why people give $18 often as a gift or a multiple of 18, giving life to another person to make them happy. And the word for happy in Hebrew is sameach, mitsuyan. I remind you that at the end of a word, a chet with a patach is read up instead of down. And therefore the word is sameach, not samecha, sameach. And sameach means happy, mitsuyan. And the phrase chag sameach, where the word chag means holiday, chag sameach means happy holiday. And here is the name with the ach in it, 
that we taught you before. Two vowels, two syllables. Noach. And Noach is the character Noah from the Torah and the story of the flood. Noach. If you could read all of these words and know what they mean, if you know most of these Hebrew words, you are way ahead of the game and you should feel very proud and very happy. I say to you, Mazal Tov. Mazal Tov. Congratulations. And now we simply go from here to learn more and more Hebrew words as this becomes for you a Hebrew language, especially Hebrew language involved in the experience of Judaism. I hope you enjoyed that lesson of From the Aleph Bet. And remember, you can download lesson sheets and worksheets for every lesson of the series free of charge. Just visit the JBS website homepage at jbstv.org and click on the program icon for From the Aleph Bet. And then click on the very first option, From the Aleph Bet Hebrew Study Sheets. And for anyone who can send JBS a tax-deductible donation of $180 or more, we'll be pleased to send you the entire 20 program series one of From the Aleph Bet on DVD, complete with a CD of lesson sheets and worksheets. JBS, expanding Jewish understanding, celebrating all things Jewish. Be well, my friends. Aleph, bet, bet, gimel, dalet, hey, bob, sein, chet, tet, yud, kof, chof, lamed, men, yon, samech, ha'in, pei, fit, sadik, kuf, reish, shun, sin, tof, now I think I've said enough.